All right, we're at the American Muscle Car Museum in Melbourne, Florida. We're going to go inside. It's going to be a fun day, so come along for the ride. This is going to be super fun. Go ahead. Holy cow. And there's lights. We're supposed to meet Ed here. <laughs> and there he is. Good morning. Evan, Ed. welcome. Evan Smith, nice to meet you. Welcome to the American Muscle Hi. Car Museum. Dakota. Welcome to the American. Nice to meet you. Dakota, and we got Mark and Evan. We Evan got Mark too. And Evan. On camera uh, today. I see your sa safe travels, so welcome to Melbourne. And here again, what a great day to come out and see some cars. We made it over here, and my mind is kind of already blown, and I'm assuming this is just the showroom. This would be the front showroom here. Um, as you've seen as you come in, there's 42 acres on the ground, and what did you see outside? A lot of solar panels. Oh, yeah. We're 100% in a sense solar run during the day. We do not have battery backups, but we're the largest solar powered auto museum in the world. Really? And you can see here, I mean, this is a in a sense, we're not a private museum, but we're not open to the public on a daily basis. We're open per event, like a soccer or baseball stadium. Right. So in a sense, you know, we really enjoy being part of the community and being able to share a lot. And one of the main things we do is fundraising for Brevard County. 100% of the proceeds that we get for those goes directly to the charities. Second thing we do is auto events. It could be a car show or an autocross with one of the local clubs. Third thing is education, which is a lot of fun. And that's, in a sense, preserve, educate, and share with the younger generation as far as first grade to college age of things oh, we do here. And the largest event we do is thank you events for police, fire, 911 responders. And Veterans Day, we have a Veterans Day open house for veterans and their family to thank you for the quality of life we have here. And that was pretty quick little synopsis of what we do here. But, hey, how about the cars? Oh, my God. Well, I'll tell you what. I've, been, I've known about this place for years. Yes. A bunch of my different car friends have said, you got to check this place out. The American Muscle Car Museum, I've been on the website numerous yes. times. So about a month or so ago, when you reached out to me, I'm like, oh, check this out. <laughs> we got an invite to go over there. You bet. I jumped right on it. So Ed, thank you so much for you having bet. us. And I'm excited about today. Okay. Well, and here again, I also want to say, hey, welcome from Mark Pilock. He is the owner and founder of the American Muscle Car Museum. You know, and his vision here again is to share, you know, the collection he has, the love he has, the passion he has. And for younger generations, let's get them involved any way we can. Definitely. You know, as you come walking in the front showroom, this is where a lot of the events begin. And what do you see in here? A whole lot of Ford GTs. <laughs> Ford Performance has told us we have the largest Ford GT collection in the world. Wow. And we've had Etzel Ford, and we've worked with the Mustang GTD program, so it's been pretty neat to be a part of that. In the center turnstile here is probably one of our most valuable cars. If you look at that, it's 1966. That's one of the aluminum prototypes, an Allen Mann car. Uh, that's uh, actually serial number one. They made two of them. We're not really sure if the second one is, exists, doesn't exist. Either way, that's a real piece of history right there. And you look at that car, that did the time trials in 1966 at Le Mans. Right. However, Ford scrapped that program, went with Carroll Shelby's fiberglass body 427 car. Um, feel very honored for that. We had Etzel Ford II actually present a heritage award to the Allen Mann family. They've only done 28 of those in the history of Ford, when you think about that, of how much Ford's been involved in. And they presented that to them right here at this museum. <laughs> so that's a neat piece of history. The other thing that the Ford GT program has done is not only have they taken those, but they've done heritage cars. You look at that number 16 here, you come over here to the newer generation, and they actually call these a second generation, which doesn't make sense to me, because to me the first generation was the 60s ones, but that's how they did it. Right. And here is the Allen Mann Heritage Edition right here. In the 2022 number 16 car and it has the same type of colors and we'll see more of the ford gt as, as we go through it but we have a lot of the ford gt heritage cars in a sense we have the complete set that's that's absolutely i'm just trying to comprehend it all yes. and we haven't even gotten past the showroom yet no this is it this is all you get today <laughs> okay. all right let's go uh, as you come around the circle there's a 2005 and 2004 gts yep and one of the things I'd like to share with you is how many cars do you think we have with less than 100 original miles? Take a guess. We'll ask Dakota this oh, question. Lord. 40? 280 currently. <laughs> wow. And like in the circle, to give you an example, the 2005 in the Quicksilver has less than five original miles on it. Wow. All of these cars right now in the circle have less than 100 original miles with the exception of the Midnight Blue car. It has about 300 miles and we're currently seeking to that car to, you know, so we have that complete set. Now these are eight, all eight of the production colors for 2005 and 2006. There was a couple one-offs that mm -hmm. are rare and hard to find and they're out there. But no, this really shows a part of the Ford GT history 
And Mark grew up in a Ford family. His uncle had a salvage yard, and that's where his love you know, initially came from. He got to restore cars, help him put himself through college. You look around the rest of the room, up on the wall, you got the balloon tire bicycle collection. Up top, we have some pedal cars, and you see a, a lot of neon signs. My favorite one is a Shelby one with the red eyes over there. You got to get your cameraman to make sure you get a shot of that one. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I like to keep my circle of friends kind of small, but this is my kind of circle right this here. This is your kind of circle right here. <laughs> and another thing we we're very proud of, which we'll touch on a little bit later, is we keep all the cars in running and driving condition. You look on the bottom of it, and you'll see a CTEC battery tender on all the cars, and that's by choice. That's by Mark's desire to do that. Right. That's actually at a very high cost to him. And we have a fully staffed maintenance shop, which I'll show you shortly. And fully staffed, there's not a whole lot of us, but we're very experienced. We work together, and we're good at what we do. Well, just in looking around, between the bicycles, the soda machines, I love the old outboard uh, boat motors over there. Yeah. A lot of different things to see, which we'll cover. <laughs> It's almost like, where do you start? But I know you got some Mustangs in the back too, right? We got some Mustangs. Let's talk about a couple Mustangs we got up here. Oh, look at this. We got Boss 429, a Boss 302, and a 65 Shelby GT350. Pretty much the trifecta of Mustangs in one shot. Well, what I also love is the colors, how they jump. I mean, the grabber blue, the grabber orange. Wimbledon White. What's special about that car, that's one of the prototype cars. Oh, is it? They made 12 originally prototype cars to go out and, in a sense, promote the Shelby cars, the G350, show what it could do. And that car became a lot of different colors as it went from one state to another, or to one show to another. They didn't have a lot of cars, but they gave the illusion they had them. How many of those are left? Not many. Nope. They didn't really make a whole lot of them to begin with, nope. and they are very high-value cars. This is one I would like to <laughs> walk over to it, and I'll show you a closer look on it. This is one that is actually listed in the Shelby Registry. Um, there is a special story on this one here. Let me grab this book out of the dash. Are these more rare with the Shelby wheels? Because a lot yeah. of them just had the Let steel wheels. Let me hold that for a second. It's actually listed in the Shelby Registry there. I have this book at home, actually. Okay. Shelby Registry. And this is one that's incredible. Shelby Cars in Detail is actually listed in there because this is one where they stamped R at the end of the name because it was a prototype car and it baffled people for a long time. And we'll actually take a look at that here in a second, but let's set this down. Go ahead. Come around here. Excuse me, man. Like this one here where they would add their Shelby ID tags to it. Right. And in 1970, they changed it. We can talk about that as we come later car. But I mean, this is pretty much, they would take a Shelby car, modify it, make it a little faster, put some horsepower in it. This is a real piece of history here. Even got the Rotunda oil filter. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's always details with these kind of cars. You know, it is. The, correct, the correct hardware everywhere. Mm -hmm. And even the way they did the wiring back then is mm -hmm. so different than vehicles today that it makes a huge difference during restoration. Absolutely. Well, and you also look at, say, the gas pumps here. This is one of the things that I like to, when we have kids tours, I says, hey, where does mom and dad put the debit card or the credit card? I know. And they all look at you like, what are you talking about? It's like, no, that's what we had. Yeah. They don't talk to you except ching, 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 yes. ching. <laughs> and we tried to put, you know, hey, this is about what it had been a gallon around that time. It's amazing. And it was high test. Yes. Or low yeah. lead. Low lead. You know, we have some of the things like you talk about Mustang times. This is one of the uh, national events we had there from the AMA, MCA Club of America. So it's a nice little magazine write-up they did on that in the Mustang times. My good friend Donald Farr. Yes. Who just came out with the 60th anniversary Mustang book. Did he? Yeah. Actually, I just talked to him to get some facts straight on a 70 GT500 video we were doing. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's walk around this other part of the room before we head in the back. Okay. Four GTs everywhere. Is this not incredible? And we're just getting started. And as you can look, this building, you know, I mean, you can see this building was built by Mark's vision, spec built to, you know, house his collection here. So you can see everything is very open, very easy to use, very modern. This may seem like it's pick on Dakota today, but here we're going to do it anyway. Can I have, <laughs> have you hop in there? 
We have kids ask, what, do we have any electric cars in the collection? Well, in a sense, we have one electric car right here. You know, in a sense, this would be fun. Yeah, I can relate to this because if we'd go to state fairs, that's what they'd have there. But in a whole lot, you know, kids enjoy that. And just to sit there, it's like, wow, this is a piece of history you just don't see anymore. Old school bumper cars. Absolutely. It's but, like padded right here for you, too, when you hit. Yeah, that way. And you were going to hit. If you drove one of these things, you were definitely smashing your head yeah. on these things. Man. It's even got a rug interior. Yeah. The detail compared to a real vehicle of the time is just incredible. The chrome, the trim, it is. the paint. It's not just a fiberglass thing with a wrap or anything. It's got actual hood ornament and lights. Very cool. And we lived through that. Hard to believe. <laughs> we did. We drank out of the hose. We were talking about that on the way over here. Here's three more of the heritage cars. Right. This would have been after the 1969 winning colors. This would have been after the 1966 colors. And the A.J. Foyt colors in 1967, the number one. Let's come over here. we got the Cobra area. And we got a 1962. This is a 50th anniversary produced at Shelby America. And believe it or not, even though they're a small block car, these are probably my favorite driving cars. They're easy to drive. They handle well. Not too bad to get in and out of. We have an Allen Grant car right here. Let me pop the hood on this one for you. The, uh, the FIA 289 body style is my favorite. Yeah. I think I like this as much, if not better, than the 427. Oh, and you got the Webers. Oh, hold my God. Hold that up a second. I'm going to come over on the other side, and I'll put the hood prop up. Oh, Evan, check this out. Weber Carburation, 289. Oh, I bet this thing has a nice cackle to it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to drive. Oh, these are just such beautiful cars. Knockoff rims. Wow. What's neat is you can go to any country in the world and people recognize what a Cobra is. Yeah, this is like universal coolness right here. Mm -hmm. Man. And next to it right here, this is a 1966. This is one of the true 427 Cobras. This is serial number 3210. This car has a unique piece of history. In a sense, it was a special present for a high school graduation for a kid that was bright-eyed and I'm pretty excited about it. Unfortunately, after a couple of years, he didn't like it. <laughs> Traded off for $1,500 trade-in for a 1968 Corvette, and he still regrets doing that. Oh. Yeah, I bet he does, because that 68 Corvette's not worth what this thing's worth. Okay. Now, this one here was actually purchased as a street model, but it has some of the competition mods on it as it went through its life. What I mean by that is the hood scoop, the side pipes, and the roll bar wouldn't have been on a street model. And this one here was purchased at Tasca Ford. Okay, in this car, is we have a lot of the original documentation on it. And I'm going to pick on Dakota here, because she's got better eyes than I do. What does the <laughs> actual price say there? $6,700. So... You know, these cars are bringing you know, mid-million dollars to close to $2 million plus. Yeah, I think just one sold at Monterey. Did it? I think a million, million plus, a million one, million two I for a 427 that. car. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, I mean, there's so many replicas. You go to any Cars and Coffee, any car show, and I love the replicas or the yeah. continuation cars, but seeing a real one mm -hmm. and something that's worth like a million plus right in front of you, and the detail and the fact that these things were just built for all out just to be the most badass thing on the road. And little details about, not that people per se get them wrong, but the reverse speedometer. I just always wondered, like, why did they have a reverse speedometer? Well, one thing I've noticed that fascinates me about this car, while you're right here, you're in a perfect spot to see it. I'm going to have you kind of sneak back behind here a little bit. And obviously, Carol was really good about putting the biggest horsepower, the biggest motor in the lightest car. But in a sense, they had to move the motor and tranny back. Look at how the pedals sit as far as the brake and the Oh, yeah, everything. It's off. like driving a new Viper where everything, the doghouse is kind of like a little bit that. in the way and you drive with your feet off to the side. Yeah. And then the shifter. I mean, Stand it's a Mustang shifter that's actually turned around, you know, and face forward so they could use oh, the shifter wow. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's a couple things like the Speedo wraps backwards the opposite way the tack is right in your in your mm -hmm. line of sight right where you need it like you said they had to bend the shifter forward reverse it yeah. otherwise uh, the shifter would be shifting behind you yeah. another modification they did on the when they did their restoration of the car in the 70s is they eliminated the glove box that would be on the street cars right and to me any of the updates or upgrades they did i think actually accents the car 
Oh, yeah, and then you always had to be careful because you could get what they used to call a snake bite. You know what that is? Mm -mm. When you get out of the car after you drive it and you go like that with your leg, oh. you don't, you don't do hold it, it there very long. <laughs> no, you'd only do that once. Yeah, but like even just the low back buckets. So when you gun the throttle, like in today's cars, the seat, mm -hmm. especially like, you know, the new Dodges, the new Shelbys, the seat like encapsulates you. These cars... Yeah. Like when you gun the throttle, there's nothing from your mid back up. You're just, oh my God, you're trying to hold yeah. on. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the seats. These are actually originally unrestored sheets. Wow. So, but no, this is, in a sense, this is a, one of the cars that uh, when we take out and exercise the cars, we do it on the grounds. And this is one with not quite 40,000 miles on it, but we can take and do some, put some miles on it on the grounds here. With 42 acres, we've got room to do that. Right. That's great. You don't have to worry about somebody else driving in No. Here. And no, you'll notice, you'll notice no lug nuts. So these are called knockoff wheels. If you guys aren't familiar with the knockoff wheels, you literally take a mallet um, and literally bang the, the snot out of that to loosen the wheel. And then you have safety wire right here that you put back on after you've put your wheel back on to make sure that it doesn't come off. Uh, working in the body shop way back when, I actually fixed a couple cars, mid-year Corvettes and stuff like that where people didn't get them tight enough and no oh, safety wow. wire. Yep. And then the Aurora powered Shelby one these were pretty cool too this is actually I think the only car that Carroll Shelby built from scratch right correct because technically these were started as Bristol um, AC Bristol bodies yes. with a Ford engine this is the only car that Carroll Shelby built 100% from scratch Aurora Oldsmobile V8 engine a lot of you could see Cobra in it you could see a lot of the the different style, you could see maybe a little bit of Ferrari 250 GTO in the way the back and the quarter panel is. Great looking cars though. What's really neat about this when we were researching for a video is the history about it. I mean all the, in a sense, the development, the engineering. Uh, these cars had a Hertz rating of 52. Uh, Hertz rating is the stiffness of an automobile. These cars had a Hertz rating of 52, which is actually a mathematical formula for right. gauging the stiffness of it. In comparison, by say like a 2000 Corvette, it would be like 23 to 27. So it's a very stiff car. And also, Multimatic that works with the new Ford GTs, mm -hmm. they helped develop a lot of the suspension. Um, so in a sense, the car was kind of close, but not quite there to be in a supercar. Right. Is it impressive? Also, with Carroll Shelby being the businessman that he was, he set up a dealer network at the time of over 17 dealers. Now, if they sold over 250 cars, each one of them got a $10,000 bonus on top of that car. So he stopped at 249. <laughs> He's a smart business guy. Yeah. Well, I know we want to get inside and see sure. some of the, the Mustangs and stuff, but I'd be remiss if we didn't take a quick peek at the Coke machines, the Whizzer bicycles, which were really neat, moped bicycle kind of before their time. And then, of course, one of my favorites here, the replica of the 66 Ford GT, which is probably one of my all-time favorite cars. I mean, I'm sure that share that thought with a lot of people, but the bikes, the Coke machines, and these, I'm assuming, are all original, restored, beautiful. Those are original, restored, and a lot of them are restored by Walt at Pass Gas. I mean, he, fantastic man it's, uh, as far as his quality, his craftsmanship, and good to work with, and he's close. Mm -hmm. And even like you're looking at this car, just the craftsmanship on the exhaust alone is incredible. The, are those titanium pipes? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of welding going on there, and the, the, the nickname for that, if you're unfamiliar, is called the Bundle of Snakes. Aptly named, because it looks like a bunch of snakes kind of just wrapped around each other. I had the opportunity one time to drive one of these right-hand steer car, too, yeah. with Webers, and it just, oh, you smelled the fuel, the cackle. It's fun to drive. They're really, really fun cars to drive. And here's the original photo of Carol and Ken Miles. The I'm guy behind him looking down with a creepy look on his face there is actually Carol Shelby's machinist, Steel Thurkinson. Huh. And we've got that photo and quite a few other photos from his family they donated to us, which was really nice of them. Really? Yeah, I mean, just everything going on from the fans up here in the upper deck to the military guy right there with just that typical kind of gruff military look on his face like, I know somebody's up to something. And it looks like Ken Miles is smiling, so they must have just done something good. Yeah. We can, you know, wrap it up here. We can go in the back showroom. What's your thoughts? I say we go check it out. Yeah. Okay. So come back for part two, and we're going to show you everything we got.